Lord sits me down. Amen. I certainly appreciate the Lord and appreciate what He's done for me lately. As you all know, I underwent an extremely tough operation. If you've never had open heart surgery, believe me, it's a tough operation. But you know, during it all, there was one, two, and three that was on my side. You know, the Lord was always there. Brother Marlon, it was a couple times when I was really bad off. I really felt bad. I didn't know if I was going to live or die. But you know, I knew this church was praying for me because it was about the same time the church was praying that I started feeling better. You know, I know God is real. He's real in my soul. Praise Him in Amen. I'm going to praise Him until the day I can't breathe another breath. I don't care what comes out here in this world. I don't care what goes out here in this world. The world is always going to be a world. The world will never be the world. You know, we're different from the world. We're not part of that. We're not part of that. I'm so glad that day that I can look up to heaven and see Jesus standing on the right hand of the apostle. Amen. He's a real God. Yes. The world. We don't have to take our shiny automobile and wax it up every Sunday. We don't have to go down here and watch the Buccaneers play every All right, Sunday. We you know, we don't have to go out here and find us something. We don't have to go out here and pull something out of our pocket and line it up. All right. But you know, God is real. Yeah. He delivered me from those. He delivered you. 1981, He delivered me. I can tell you what He done it. Come on. Also delivered me from alcohol. Delivered me from cursing. Delivered me from a lot of things. Did I always have a good life after that? As a flesh? No, I've done things that was wrong. There's always a battle if you're serving God until the day you're perfected. And from this flesh, you know, you have a true sonship in the Father. Yes. You're going to fight a battle. Yes, you will. Yes, brother. But thank God He gives us something. He gives us something that we can be able to overcome. That we shall deliver me. Amen, brother. So today I'm thankful. And I want to thank all of you for your cards and your prayer and your calls and calls, your visitations. I know somebody come up to the hospital the first couple, three days out of there. I don't in there three days, as a matter of fact. You come up there. And I don't remember you being there. But I haven't lost my mind either. I had one of my brothers had this operation and he went blank for a while. He had to learn things all over again. But you know, God's real to me. He's kept me through all this. Isn't he real? He's building me up every day. Every day I feel better. Isn't he good? So he's good. He's real he's good. good. He's he's good. good. Last night I tried real hard to get up and I couldn't get up. I couldn't find the space. I'm not as quick jumping as some people and maybe that's something. That, and maybe that's some fault that I have. But you know, no, sir, brother. I guess today was my day. Amen. And I just want to say a few things. You know, God give us something here and it says over in Revelation in about the 12th chapter, I think it says, and they overcame you know, I mentioned something about overcoming just a while ago. And how do we overcome? It's by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. <laughs> oh, God. Somebody said it here last night or week tonight, whenever it was, I was in here last night and heard it. You know, I dare you to go home and apply the blood there to your doorposts, to the mail of your house. Do it. You might be surprised at the goodness that comes out of that. Amen. You know, the blood is what keeps us in it. Amen, brother. I knew this here. Uh, I knew this fella one time. I won't call his religion. But I knew this fella, and, and, and they don't believe in taking blood. Uh -huh. Well, he was my boss, but I worked out in Georgia. And he had a son at that time, and his son was about 18 or 20 years old. And he had one of these little... Uh, MGs, I think they call them, you know, they're not hardly big enough for me to fit in, much less two or three people. But anyway, him and his friend, two boys, two men, they was out riding this thing and had a wreck. Well, the other passenger, he'd come through pretty good, but the, uh, the driver, he 
he got all messed up and lost a lot of blood and they wanted to give him to the hospital and doctors wanted to give him a blood transfusion of course the parents they wouldn't they wouldn't let him do it and they said without this blood this boy has about a 90 percent chance of dying and they said you cannot give him any blood well they ended up giving him something i don't know what it was probably these nurses around here know what it is but they give him some kind of liquid stuff to help build his blood back up and he finally pulled out of it but you know we don't have to go through all those things because we come in here and just like today we can feel the blood flying <laughs> it's an everyday transfusion if you'll only accept it brother paul was talking about it last month in words you know he didn't say blood transfusion but that's what he meant yeah, hallelujah i just love my lord tonight so this is overcome by the blood of the lamb but I want to read something, if I can find it in my Bible, you know, when I get up here, I get kind of nervous sometimes, most of the time, 99% of the time I get nervous. <laughs> Amen, brother. But I also know that I need to do it, because this is the way that I grow in the Lord. Amen. Amen. I sit out there on, on, my, on my seat all the time, and, and let everybody else stand up, then hey, I'm missing out on something. Amen. I'm missing out on how God feeds my soul. Amen. And stand up and, 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 and let God express yourself to the brothers and sisters. And while you're doing that, you're expressing yourself to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that gives us the hope that we have in our heart today. Jesus said, uh, uh, Jeremiah said, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope in the Lord is. He's my hope tonight, brother and sister, and he should be your hope. Without him, we have nothing. Without him, we're lost. We're undone. We're in a world of darkness. We don't have any light to us. We don't have anything to us. Amen. Amen. So today, I'm appreciative of my Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. He's such a good, he's such a good God. Such a good God. Good job, bro. Amen. James says in the first chapter, and I'm just going to read this and find, find where I really want to go to it. He says in the first chapter, that be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. You know, sometimes we want to hear the word of God and we think when we hear it that everything is okay. And somewhat it is okay. But if we're doers of the word, we're going to apply that to our lives. And we're not going to be sitting back on our seat of do nothing. But we're going to be reaching out, showing our light that we have. And says, don't, let you, don't hide your light in a bundle of bushels. That way it goes. Let it shine. Let it shine. And that means be a doer of the word. Doer of the word. If you hear the word of God, put it in practice. Don't be ashamed of it. <laughs> Deceiving your own self. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. And I just said that because I want to read this over here in, in, in Luke. Yes. In the sixth chapter. Starting with the 46th verse. It says, And why I call... <coughs> Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? <coughs> Whosoever comes to me and hears my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Yes. So you say, here's the Lord himself telling us. Yes. Do it, do it, do it. Do the word. Carry it out. Yes, carry it out. Amen, brother. <laughs> We've got a ministry here. Not just a minister, but we've got a ministry here. A ministry. You know, back in, back in Genesis, back over there in the beginning of the time in Exodus and all the, the children of Israel, they, they, they built bricks when they, was in, when they was in Egypt. And they had old straw and all kinds of old stuff, you know, they put in there and they had to hunt it up and, and, there, and make bricks. And when, when the uh, Tower of Babel was being built, it was said there in Genesis in the 13th chapter, I think it's the 13th chapter, it said, let us go to and, and, 
Bill Brick. Well, think about this here. This is something my natural brother told me the other day, and it, and it kind of got to me and made me think a little bit. Now, let us build brick. Well, you know, bricks, look at them. They're all the same, aren't they? Same dimension, same size, same this and same that. They use them in houses. They make a bigger size, and, you know, I know that, but than some of the others. But they're all the same. And they got straw in them. Today's bricks don't, but they did back in those days. And straw wasn't any good. And then the point that I want to bring to your mind is, if you've got these here bricks and they're all the same, do we all want to be the same? No. I don't want to be the same as no, you, no. and I don't want to be the same as you. The only one I want to even be close to is my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But then when David went out, and I, follow me what I'm saying on this, is I think it's important in our walk with the Lord. When David went out, he went out and going to face the giant. We all face giants one kind or another <coughs> in our walk with the Lord. It's, I know I faced a bunch of them myself, and I know that you do. You cannot walk with God without facing right. something that's going to cause you to say, this is my cross, or this is that, or it's too big for me to handle, or whatever. But you know, he tried the armor of Saul, and it wasn't, it wasn't what he needed. It wasn't it. You know, it just wasn't tried by him. And, but thank God he went down to the brook, and he had a little old slingshot. Went down to the brook and picked up five smooth stones. Now, picture this in your mind. These stones here are not bricks. He picked up five smooth stones. They've been running this in this creek or this river, and, and he picked them up, and the water's been washing over them. Water washes over us here. It's been washing over me today, and it's been washing over you. should have been. Oh, yes. The Spirit of the Lord is here. I remember the first time I felt the Holy Ghost when I come back into this church. But last week sometime, I can't remember what night it was, and Sister Eastman, she come back there and I was sitting in her chair. And I thought the whole hair that I had on my body was going to jump off. <laughs> you know, people in this church, we've got the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. We need to utilize it a little bit more. Excuse me for saying that, but we do need to utilize it. Yeah, yeah. But he picked up these five smooth stones, Brother Marlowe, mm -hmm. and they wasn't none of them the same. Huh. We had an apostle in one, we had a prophet in one, we had a pastor, teacher, an evangelist in yes, one. Yes, we did. <coughs> but if you went out and you got your brick, it'd been the same thing as the one before it. And that's the way man is out here in this world today. He wants everything the same. He don't want nothing different. He wants to be able to say, you do this, and you're going to be doing the same thing over here. You're going to eat this, and you're going to eat that over here. And, and, and that's the way communism is. That's the way the man strives. But thank God we got a God. He, he was the chief cornerstone, weren't he? He was the foundation of it all, weren't he? Amen. Amen. There's no other foundation oh, yeah. that can be laid than Jesus oh, yeah. Christ. Amen, brother. I appreciate him. Glory Anybody down here in this? Oh, I hope I ain't taking too long, brother. Praise the Lord. He says he's like a man we can build a house and dig deep. Amen. Get all that old stuff out of there. When they dug them wells out over there, you know the Philistines, they stopped them up and had them dig it out again. Dig them out again. Now, but let's keep our well clean. Let's get, get out of there and dig and get pure Praise living God. water. It's all well. sweet and bitter. It's oh, all man. sweet water. That's right. And laid the foundation on the rock. That's it. Who is the rock? None other than Jesus Christ. That's yeah. right. right. And when the flood arose, the stream, and beat vehemently, I think that's the way you say that word, yes. upon that house, could not shake and it. could not shake it. Or it was found. Hallelujah. It don't matter what the cares of this world are. Right. It don't matter what comes up against us. That's it. We've got a ministry that's going that's to teach it. us the Word of God. Now. We've got the Holy Ghost that's going to show us the right way. We've got a Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. it should be our house. It should be the goal that we're reaching for. He's my goal, friends. I'm putting him on. 
more so today than I did yesterday. Amen. That's right. When you have open heart surgery and you realize your heart's been 